hello there. My name is Sonia. This is Sonia with an I. Thank you so much for dropping by my channel today. Today I'm doing a mid-month wrap up. Uh, I figured for May I would try this mid-month chat because I find that when I do them all at the end of the month, especially if I've had a really good reading month, I sort of forget the books that I read at the beginning and I don't feel like I always give the best summary of them because of that. So today I wanted to try to do the books that I've read since May 1st until now, mid-month. So let's go. I have the first book that I have read this month or starting of the month, the first book that I read was Murder Always Barks Twice part of the Chatty Corgi series. This is book number two by Jennifer Hawkins. In this book, our sleuth Emma and her adorable little dog Oliver have a little adventure. And what happens here, and I have some notes here, so I apologize for that, is that um, Emma is making these cakes for, she's a baker, and she is making some cakes uh, she's asked to cater this Daphne du Maurier festival. And she's getting to know this family that's very much into Daphne du Maurier. The town that she lives in is actually the hometown of the writer. And she gets to know this family a little bit and becomes friends. And the organizer and another person that's in this group are having some issues. And of course the organizer sadly turns up dead. And the wonderful, wonderful Oliver helps Emma to solve the case. I gave this book five stars. I adore this series. One of, this is probably my most favorite series that I started this year. Absolutely love it, hands down. Um, the next book that I read was a book called The Secret Serendipity. It is by Kathy Nickerson. This was a middle grade book that I read for middle grade May. And uh, I was participating in Middle Grade May, and this fit one of the categories of one of the, of Lee, who talked about um, something about coming home or having a new home was one of her tags. And, or one of her, um, po the points that she wanted to meet in the challenge, one of her challenges. So in this book, this is a, a cute Christian middle grade book about a girl who moves to a small town and makes it an unexpected friend. So Kara is has moved to this small town. Her dad has became the parish doctor, and she is she's hating it because she misses the city. She misses her best friend, and she ends up going into this little gardening shed that's on the property that they're living in, and she ends up meeting the person who owns the property that they're renting it from. And this, this woman is, is an older woman, and she's supposed to be in the nursing home, but she hangs out in this potting shed, and she and Kara become friends. This was a really cute little story. I really enjoyed it. It was a fast read. It is a middle grade. Uh, it was very sweet. And the, you know, I love books that have either like a younger main character with an older friend that, that build that relationship. It was very super sweet. The, the older woman helps Kara to, um, find happiness in the small town to embrace her family and cause a little mischief too. Like I said, I gave this book three stars. I thought it was a good read. The next book that I read was for also for middle grade, middle grade March was Gertie's Leap to Greatness. I read this for Storm's Challenge. That was to read an author you've never read before. This is by Kate Beasley. This is Kate Beasley's first book. So it's her deb debut book. I gave this book, um, I gave this book 2.5 stars on Goodreads. I, I gave it a three because they don't allow the, the points. So Gertie is, um, Gertie has a lot of self-esteem. She just thinks she's awesome and she's going to be awesome at everything she does. She's going to be the most awesome fifth grader ever. Well, she comes to learn that there's a new girl in town and the new girl's dad is a director and knows famous people and she knows famous people. So Gertie kind of gets 
the throne to the wayside, I guess, because this other girl is, is, gets all of this attention. And Gertie is just bound and determined that she is going to show the world that she is a good person and she's going to be the best. And she really wants to be the best because her mother abandoned her when she was young and basically told her that she didn't want to be her mom anymore and went away. But her mom still lives in this town. Like she drives on the rides on the bus every day and goes past her mom and all Gertie wants to do is to show her mother what she's missing out on. And so everything that she does is is to prove to her mom that she's worth love. This book saddened me. It made me so sad. And I, I felt like it was written well. The story was interesting. I just felt so sorry for Gertie. Gertie had a wonderful auntie and her father who loved her and cared for her, but all Gertie could focus on was the fact that she needed to be perfect for her mother, to show her mother that she is worthwhile and worth something. And it just absolutely broke my heart. I am... Um, the story, you know, it, it, it had so many things that Gertie was doing. She's just striving to please her mother and to make her mother happy. And her mother is just not even a part of her world. You know, Gertie finds her mother and her mother has another family. And it just saddens me and it angers me that a mother would do what she did to Gertie to her child. I'm not a mom, but I cannot even imagine abandoning my child and just being like, Oh, I don't want to be your mother anymore. And I don't know for someone who went through a little bit of this with my father, the story was hard for me. It was very triggering. I had to put it down a couple of times and even, I mean, I'm almost 50 years old and I still, it still hurts. So I, I will warn you if you don't have a great relationship with your parents or any, if you've ever been, have any sort of abandonment, this, this, this was a tough read. It was a tough read for me. So I gave it two and a half stars. Well, some of it was because it was so triggering, but it, the story was well told. There were a few times in the story that I felt like it was kind of overly descriptive, um, that it didn't need as much detail as it was giving. And there were a few times that, you know, Gertie's behavior kind of grated on my nerves, but I still understand where she was coming from. And yeah, this, this was a hard read for me. Um, it's not it's a good story and if those things don't bother you you would probably would enjoy this but as I said I gave it a about a three star the next book I read was Death by Smoothie a Jane Austen mystery this was number 19 by Laura Levine I love these books uh, we have if you've watched my channel or any other cozy mystery channel we rave about these books because they they're so funny. They're hysterical. Now, this is number, I can't believe this is number 19, but it is number 19. Um, I think this one was my favorite thus far. I loved the, the premise, and I laughed out loud multiple times. Uh, I, I always feel really bad for Jane. I want Jane to win just once. I really do. She tries so hard. But our gal Jane is uh, she's sort of a freelance writer and she is asked to write a script for a play that's being based on this kind of cult popular TV show. What I love is that cult popular TV show is featured in another book in this series, The Death of a Neighborhood Witch, which was my favorite that I've read until this one. So anyway, she gets asked to do this and she goes to the play practices. She works with the producer and the producer, they're, they're having actors and actresses try out for these parts and they, the producer ends up choosing this actress who's just, she's horrible. She's just horrible. She's a horrible actress. She's hateful to everybody else. And Jane, Jane is reading the script and going, oh my gosh, this is trash. How am I supposed to fix this? It's just comical, every bit of it. Well, because, you know, be, the, the bad guy always gets it, basically, in most cozy mysteries. So that happens. Uh, somebody poisons this gal's smoothie that she has to have every day at 3 o'clock. And then there's a mystery afoot. And, of course, Jane is trying to solve the mystery because one of her friends is involved. And anyway, this is my only complaint about Jane Austen mysteries. Jane does not have a good friend. She has her one friend that lives next door to her who is 
horrible, judgmental. He is never listens to her. It's always all about him. He falls in love every time his pants fall down. He is not a good friend. Her cat is a huge jerk. And it's funny, but her cat's a huge jerk. And then her girlfriend best friend is always... She's the same, she's the same kind of like he is. As soon as a man is in the room, she is, you know, and then she's telling Jane to do all these things to change herself so she can catch a man. Whew. And then her, her parents, this, her parents were the reason this one was my favorite. Her father goes on some adventures and it is my absolute favorite part of this book. So I gave this one five stars. It was my favorite in the series thus far. The next one that I read was the third of the Chatty Corgi series, and it was called A Cold Nose for Murder. It's by Jennifer Hawkins. And in this one, I gave this one 4.5 stars. And it so far, it's been my least favorite in the series, but still really, really good. It felt like this one went on longer than it needed to. But in this one, um, Emma... Emma is in, um, she's doing a tour of, of um, an eatery or something like that. And there's a sealed off area. And in the sealed off area, they end up finding a skeleton, a past, a past murder, basically. So she's trying to figure out this past murder. But because of the past murder, it's affecting her friends who own the antique store. And it's affecting people that she cares about. So she and Oliver go on the case. I usually like cold cases. Um, like I said, I felt like there was a lot of, it just felt like it went a little bit longer. Still very enjoyable though. Like I said, 4.5 stars, but probably my least favorite of the three. I did finish the series. The series is now over as far as I know. On Goodreads is another book listed, but it was, it's like the last one came out in 2021. So I don't know if there will be any, more in the series. I should certainly hope that there is. The next book that I read was Till Daff Do Us Part, The Daphne Jones Mysteries by Philip, Philippa Clark. And in this story, we have Daphne and Daphne's married. Finally, a main character who is married. Her husband's name is, believe John. Yes, her husband's name is John. And Philippa is, she is an older sleuth. She's a middle-aged sleuth. Love. She lives in Australia. Love. And she is a, um, she, she, officiant. She's an officiant. Couldn't think of the word. She's an officiant. So she does weddings. She does funerals or whatnot. And she is hired to do this wedding. And um, one of the bridal party members, passes right after the wedding and then she feels a little bit responsible and how she, like she needs to figure this out and she's kind of naturally nosy and she really kind of re reminds me um of a little bit of Daphne from the Scooby-Doo and I started reading this because Amy Marie at um at Amy Marie's channel she talked about this book and she said the same thing that it reminded her of like Daphne and Fred but older but uh, she talked about this, and I got a little enthusiastic about it, found it on Hoopla, read it, and I really, really loved it, really enjoyed it. I love having a main character who is married and middle-aged and in a total, in Australia. Like, I've never read a cozy mystery in Australia before, so I really enjoyed this. I did give it a solid four stars. I really hope that there are more to come. It was really short, but... Um, it was still very enjoyable. Great read. And the last book thus far that I have read to this point is All Fudged Up, part of the Candy Coated Mysteries. This was number one by Nancy Coco. I was really looking forward to this because it takes place in Mackinac Island. I love Michigan. I love Mackinac Island. We just went there last, not even a year ago, last September. And I was really just so excited about it. And I don't know if my excitement about the location is what, why I was disappointed or I don't know. I know a lot of people love this series and I'll be really honest. I didn't love it. It was an okay read. It is not something I plan to continue. I was, I loved the whole 
Michigan premise. I love that it's, you know, she makes fudge. They talk about the fudgies. They talk all of this, all the Michiganders. I love that. But I don't know. The book disappointed me. I found the main character. She's in her 30s. I found her really immature. Um, she had just lost her, her papa. And yet she is just kind of like, I don't know. She just seems sort of flaky and... I don't know. Something else that I've noticed that's kind of a trend in cozies that I don't really care for. And, you know, I don't, romance and cozies, I don't love. But there's a good way to do that. Diane Kelly, Karina Moss, they have romance and relationships in their cozies, and it doesn't irritate me. It doesn't get on my nerves. It's like it's done right. It's like in a mature way. This one, I mean, every man that walked into the room, she's like, ooh, he fills out his pants nicely, or ooh, look at how broad his shoulders are. And I'm like, why? I, I don't, you know, it's okay. If that thought was once ha once happened, the police officer or the, the police chief comes in, he's attractive, she notices, she says something, he has nice eyes, whatever it is, that's fine. But every time he walks into the room and you see him, she makes some sort of comment about his looks. If it, and I can't help but think if that was switched and it was the male point of view to a female, would it be okay? You know, most people would consider that kind of sexist. I don't know. It's just my thought. I don't care for it. I, it, it came off. I, I just, I, it seemed like that it, she was more interested in how hot ever all the guys were in town than she was in actually trying to solve the mystery. She had, what had happened also, in the very first chapter, she finds finds the body. And it just happened, she finds it in a closet. And I needed a little warm-up. You know, I needed a little warm-up. I needed to know some things about the setting and her and the business and things first before the body, the body drop. I, I personally don't care for an early body drop. I want to be a little bit into the book before that happens. I mean, I don't want to be over halfway finished or even halfway finished before a body drop. But, you know, give me a little time there. It was no time. I mean, right off she found, that's like the first chapter. I didn't care for that either. I won't continue the series. Um, I just don't think it's for me. I think it's in that cozy vein that's going to be a lot of relationship drama and a lot of dating drama and all of that with a little bit of murder, a little bit of mystery. And that's really, that's just really not for me. Uh, good things about it. I thought the writing and pacing, well, the writing was good, you know, it, and it, it paced well, it, except to me, the body drop was too early. Um, so when they described Mackinac Island, when she talked about Mackinac Island, beautiful, enjoyed it. It's just, it's definitely not the book for me. So that is, I believe that is seven books and that's where I'm at this far. Um, I am going to be participating in uh, Murder and Mayhem uh, reading little challenge at the very end of this month. So I already ha kind of have a little bit of a TBR and a plan, which, you know, I don't usually TBR, but I want, I really want to do this challenge. So I'm going to do that. I am currently, I have currently started a few new books. I still, I need to finish. I have one book that I've been reading on for a month that on my eBooks that I really need to finish. I'm enjoying it, but I forget to get to it. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's what I have thus far. So thank you so much for um, stopping by. If you enjoyed this video or you finished the, this video to this point, um, April showers bring May flowers. Feel free to put a May flower in the boat or the flowers. Don't really care. <laughs> Feel free to put that in the comments and uh, like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you're if you're returning, if you're a returning viewer, I greatly appreciate you. And if you're new, I greatly appreciate you too. Uh, support is absolutely free. Thank you so much, and you make the world a better place just by being in it. I'll see you next time. Happy reading. Goodbye now.